Assalamu alaikum. A very uh, good welcome to the channel as viewers on Friends of Bangladeshi program. Today we have a very special friend as usual. But before I introduce him, let's go and see a video clip. James Lloyd Williams was born in Kolkata in 1950. Spending the early years of his life between India and France, James went on to study mathematics at Oxford University. He experienced village life and learned to speak and read Hindi, Bangla and Oriya. In 1974, James returned to England and trained as a secondary school teacher in Robert Montefiore and Stephanie Green School. The schools were based in a predominantly Sileti area which led to James looking to learn to speak Sileti. James retrained as a chartered accountant in 1977 when he met his wife Sue. Both shared a love of Sileti culture resulting in regular trips to Bangladesh, including renting house in Shibgoin, Silet. James discovered the existence of the Nagri script and obtained a copy of Kitab Halatun Nobi in Nagri. In 2003, James helped the Sileti Nagri alphabet and writing system achieve recognition by the International Unicode Committee. James encouraged the translation of the Holy Scriptures into Sileti so that people's lives can be brought closer to God and therefore he encouraged a translation of the Holy Quran into Sileti. Today's guest is Mr. James Lloyd Williams. Welcome to our studio. Thank you. Tell us uh, briefly about your parents. My father was from um, South Wales and um, in the time after the First World War, it was very poor. He uh, left to find work. He uh, got work with Grindley's Bank. In, in India? It, first in London, briefly, and then transferred to India, uh, to Lahore, which was then part of British India. Yes. Karachi. Mm. And uh, that was in about 1935. Right. And you were born there in the Indian subcontinent? I was, yes. In uh, At that time, my father was transferred to Calcutta. And okay. I, was, I was born in Calcutta. Calcutta in Bengal. Yes. Those days it was East Bengal and West Bengal? Uh, well, yeah. yes, but it was uh, 1950, so it was yeah. after independence. After independence, yes. And then what did you do after you were born? You moved um, about, did you? My father, my father's job, uh, he was transferred to here and there, and uh, uh, we were in Delhi for quite a few years, and I had mm -hmm. my early schooling there. Okay. And uh, when I was eight, uh, I went to boarding school in England. I started. England. So you came to England. Yes. Boarding school. How long did you study in the boarding school? Well, two different schools until okay. I was uh, until I was 19 years old. Right. 18 years old. Yes, 19 years old. Okay. And then what did you do? I went to Oxford University. Oxford for, University. For mathematics. And then what did you do? I decided I would not go straight into a career. I did two years of voluntary work in. Eastern India, and it was a rural rural work. Where about in India? It was in uh, West Bengal and West Bengal. Orissa. And then, um, did you come back to England? I came back after uh, after that two year period. I came back to England. Yes. Okay. Where about? Um, to my parents, in, who were then living in Oxford. Okay. And um, but then I uh, I was looking for a job. I thought uh, uh, school teaching might be a good. Mm. A good job for me, my first full-time, you know, uh, paid career. Okay. And uh, um, because I had learnt Bangla in, in in my time in India, right. Um, I asked where where did the Bangladeshi community or the Bengali community live in in Britain, mm. and I uh, various people told me that you know, it was in Tower Hamlets, East London. And uh, okay. I was through various contacts. I was straight away given a job. Okay. Um, at, because I was a ma had a maths degree, I could straight away get a job. Okay. And uh, it was in Robert Montefiore School at okay. that time, which was off Commercial off, Road. It? In Valence Road, Valence Road uh, yes. um, just near uh, near Whitechapel Road. Then you get acquainted with the Sileti community. Yes. Pre that, it was the Bengali community in West Bengal. Yes. You came here. You studied. And then your destination was, was East London East as London, a teacher. East London as a teacher. And, my, and most of my pupils were 
from Siletti families. Okay. And so I, I had never heard of Sillette before then, and I'd, I'd never heard of Sillette, I'd never heard of that they had uh, their own dialect or language. Okay. And, uh, but I, I quickly found it was actually uh, very different from the Bengali language. Right. And I, I had this urge to, to learn it, I would communicate people with people in their own language. You met the Sileti community in East London. Yes. And you find out that Sileti language is something different, yes. slightly different maybe. Yes. And it originated from Nagri? Well, Nagri is, is a written form. Um, writing system and a, a language is actually a, a spoken thing. That, that real right. language is a spoken language. Writing is just a code for writing it, uh, it, it for recording it. And many languages have more than one writing system. So, like Turkish, you can write in Arabic, scri Arabic script or in, Rome, in Latin script. Okay, and how it's, about it's Nagri? Not, not, what Nagri script? is the traditional script for, uh, for the Sileti language, and nowadays okay. uh, it's the folk singers and the um, people in the sort of followers, disciples of the uh, peers, like um, Shitalong Shah and... Um, and uh, they, 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 uh, they, they like the Nagri script, but uh, general population don't, uh, didn't at that time even mostly know that it had existed, actually, it yeah. had been lost. The older generation... It was it. in um, 100, 200 years ago, it was uh, popular? Well, yes, but actually it was widely uh, printed. There were many printing presses right up until 1971. Okay. There were four printing, printing. printing, yes, even in Calcutta, four printing presses in Calcutta. There was one in Sunamganj, there was two in Silet Town, there was one in Shillong. There were many Sileti, uh, Nagri printing presses. Wherever there were Sileti people, people living, were. inside and outside of Silet, there was a, Nagri was popular. So why do you think, you know, uh, it declined? This was because in the Pakistan time, um, um, Urdu was promoted. The school children, they learnt, they had to learn Urdu, uh, perhaps English and Bangla, and there wasn't any room anymore for, for Nagri. But prior to 1947, uh, the British it was there, quite it was, Nagri was even, uh, our, our various elderly people have told me that Nagri was even in the schools, in some of the schools. Because the new generation, even my generation, did not know all this. But people like you started researching and find out more about it. And now I think the Sileti people are getting to know, the Bangladeshi people are getting to know about the existence of the Nagri language. Yes. Then what did you do? Well, I had my teaching career for uh, just about three years and I was my, I have a quiet temperament and the uh, secondary schools in East London were very tough. Okay. Uh, so I, uh, uh, my health was not sufficient for, uh, for for the job. So I looked for something quieter, and I, I retrained. I, I resigned my job and retrained as an accountant. So I worked as a chartered accountant after that for 15 years. What, what made in, you go to Select? Well, Select was uh, well. First, when I. I met my, when, when I, uh, soon after I married my wife, uh, uh, Sue, uh, she, uh, we, we met in East London, she was, she, she was living there, and she was doing a PhD in London University. Um, I wanted to show her uh, my, my background, so we went on a long trip to India and Bangladesh. Okay. And uh, at that time, um, we visited we travelled around India by the trains, and we lived in villages as well. And we uh, um, we visited um, the Sundarbans, okay. and then we went to uh, Mulvi Bazaar, and we stayed in Mulvi Bazaar for a few days. And mm. uh, then you decided to live in Silet, yeah, um, for part this, of the. This is like yeah. a second, like a second home. Yes, we okay. have a. Uh, uh, we were. We were going to, gradually. Our involvement, our, our involvement was such that we had more and more visits to Silet and uh, staying in uh, other people's homes, or maybe it was empty for some reason, or as guests. In and that was so not not so 
convenience, not very tiring, not very. So you decided to. So have we decided your own. to rent. Uh, yes, we, rent we decided to rent a property. Where? It was um, in uh, Sheepgonj in Select Town, the okay. near MC College, mm -hmm. and um, we we uh, we have rented that for about eleven years now. Right. Yes. So you come and go. Come we and come go. and go. We have yeah, our own yeah. furniture, so and more, library, and office there. More Bengali, more Sileti than us. Uh, yeah? You can't say that really, but I am a... <laughs> Let's talk about Nagri, the language of Nagri now. When did you discover the existence of the Nagri script? Um, this was in a visit in 1987. I had a quite a long visit to, mm. and I stayed in a village, but I also then visited uh, Norwegian friends in Mulvey Bazaar, and um, there was just talk I, I'm, I was interested in folk songs and poetry. I actually, as a teenager in Calcutta, right. I, learned, I learned the tobla, mm -hmm. and I was interested in that. I'm a, and I just, people told me that there was this nagri. They just told me, and then I went to different bookshops, and none of them could find anything. They looked in the back of their storeroom. They think, we think we've got something, but no. And then eventually, in the Muslim Shaita Shongshad Library, in, uh, in, 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 no, in uh, the Durga, by Durga by, Gate, by, Durga Gate yeah. uh, by the Shah Jalal Mazar. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, the, 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 I, was, I was given a copy of uh, Halat al Nobi. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the most widely read of the Saleti Putis. It's about Halat al Nobi. The um, okay. traditions. In Nagri. It, it's a poetical uh, thing uh, in Nagri. Uh -huh. And I couldn't read it, and the pages were badly torn, and it was. Uh, but by chance, um, a family, a Saleti family we knew in, in East London, an uh, old lady had a copy of the Halat al Nobi in um, Bangla script. Bangla. And she lent it, and reading, side by, reading the two side by side, I could read Bangla. Okay. I, learnt, I, I learnt the Nagri writing by, by that. Fantastic. So, we have to go for a short break. Okay. Uh, viewers, stay with us, we'll be back soon. Welcome back. We are having a discussion about the Nagri language. The copy of Halat Nobi, followed by the copy given by a friend in East London. Yes. And you compared, and then um, you it started making sense, more or less, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay. Your wife, Sue? Yes. And um, she did, she's a doctor, doctorate? Yes, but in science. She was a computer literate. Yes. Tell us about that. We, we were, I was always interested in, in, in uh, languages. Uh, oh. I, I learned many, many languages like Arabic, Persian, uh, Hindi, Uriya, different languages I could read. And I was just fascinated by the different writing systems. I discovered that there was no computer, uh, computer font for the Nagri script. There okay. was a, it was handwritten or in the Halat Nobi, it was like woodblock, uh, wood old woodblock block print, uh -huh. but not a computer, uh, computer font. Uh -huh. And um, we were asked around, we found in the academic community there was a, uh, there were p experts who were making uh, new, new fonts. Okay. And, and there was a training program for making fonts uh, that they were looking for some interesting new subject to use uh, to train their people in making Where? a new font. Where? This was in uh, High Wycombe. High Wycombe, so yes. in this country? In this country. And Not in um, Silet or in Yes, Bengal. and then a subsequent one in Bangalore, but that was a, a, a later revision. Okay. So it was the students on learning how to do the software for, for designing a font, mm -hmm. uh, they used as their little guinea pig the Nagri script. And so uh, my wife Sue provided the uh, the the design uh, the copy of each each character right. and each combined character and showed how they should come together yeah. and everything and they they designed this this font under my wife's supervision. Fantastic. So, what was the name of the font? Well, the experimental one was called Surma. But, Surma by the but, river. Uh, we never published it. Okay. And it then so it, the published one became New Surma, 
And now the latest one, very confusingly, is called SUMA again, the, the one that is a Unicode, okay. uh, Unicode compliant. Okay. Do you have a website? Yes, it's uh, stiletti.org.uk and uh, the font and the instructions, two versions of the font, uh, and depending on different platforms you're using it on, and uh, instructions on how to install and use it are, are all on the all website. The, yeah. So did you get more Sileti people uh, you know, involved with your venture and, you know, as friends or yes. supporting you in various well, ways? Well, yes. I mean, somehow this uh, font, the, the design of this font, it, it reached the ears of some journalists, uh, Bangladeshi journalists, mm -hmm. and it got publicized uh, quite widely. And through that, uh, we began to get contacted from even around the world of different Sileti people saying, uh, my grandfather gave me this manuscript, I can't read it, but please... Uh, here's a copy. So the publicity helped? The publicity, yes, yes. Okay. We had a, All right. So That's uh, important, I think, mm. because, as I said, my generation or the younger people, we do not know much about Nagri. Mm. And it is no competition with any other language because it is. It has been a language. I'll open this so that uh, readers can see. This one's 200 years old as a uh -huh. copy, facsimile, but... Uh, this is an alphabet, Nagri, beginner's Bornomala, alphabet book. Yes. Nagri for beginners, yes. like me. Who was Muhammad Siddiq? He is a very senior civil servant in Bangladesh. Uh, he was the election commissioner recently. Now he's got a different post. Uh, at that time, he worked as an attaché for the Bangladesh embassy in Sweden. And uh, he came to vi visit us in London um, from Sweden. And he... It, it turned out that he had he had a large collection. He was passionate about Nagri, okay. and he had a large collection of handwritten putis. Some of one of which was 250 years old. My God, a handwritten one. So, and he was uh, he worked is, with the, late. This is from him actually. This okay. one. He worked with late, late Asad Darali. Yes, yes. yes. Um, okay. uh, Professor Asad Darali was another enthusiast, really enthusiast from the Nagri. Uh, uh, he wasn't so much in the Nagri, but on the Sileti language. Okay. And, uh, but he wrote many books on the Sileti culture and language and um, uh, traditions and collected 17,000 Sileti proverbs and sayings. Okay. And, uh, that. So by meeting him, yes. a new era started yes. and more research began, yeah? Yes. Tell us about the Puti. Well, a Puti is just a... Uh, putti is just another word for book, but it is in, uh, in, in an epic verse. It's in an epic verse format, and it can be many hundreds of pages. And these are performed traditionally. These are performed like all night, or sometimes the long puttis can take three nights to perform fully. Mm -hmm. And it's like singing. It's not really singing. We can call it chanting. Poetry. There's a tune, but it, it is in rhyming and okay. dramatized yeah, rhyme, I, and, and you have these putipora asor and um, it, they were very, po very yeah, popular in some Yeah, when I was young, villages. you know, yes. I went to few uh, putipora asor, yes. And the literature? Well, the literature is um, a, a variety. It, some of it is, it is mostly religious, um, Islamic. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it gives, I think, uh, actually, Silet got uh, the Islamic influence on Salat, but how it changed from mainly Hindu to mainly Muslim, was through this, through this kind of poetry, through all the peers, and all the peers, a lot of the peers wrote putis, and their disciples they copied them and copied memorized them. And followed them, it. And memorized oh, them, okay. yes. And, uh, and tell us about the Sileti Nagri alphabet system. It is very simple. Uh, that's why it can be learned. One, book's, one book was titled Learn Siloti in 15 Minutes. It's a little exaggeration. That was mm -hmm. the title of the book. But it's a very small alphabet. Like it's only, um, only got five vowels. Um, Bangla has like 11 vowels, the Bangla alphabet. Uh, Sileti alphabet has five vowels only. Okay. And there's one shot. You don't have uh, Dante shot. Talbishon, just a show. You modina show. You have uh, just one so show. Can I so ask you simple. to uh, say some, you know, um, silly now? 
Yes. Oye, oye, ami am kub kushi, kush kub kushi oye mu, kisu mati mu. Ije nagri bashar kuno recognition faoge sene. Mon. There is a Unicode committee or something. Unicode antojatic recognition ashe international Unicode committee. This is uh, uh, this brings together like uh, Microsoft and uh, Apple and all the companies, all there, so that there is a unif unified code. The, the Unicode means there's a unified coding for all. Uh, so, um, like the Arabic script, it has a unified coding now. In the early days of computers, every single application had uh, their their own their own coding for the different letters, so computers could not talk to each other if on the different platforms. But now there's a unified coding, and so there's a, a committee that uh, meets to agree on a settled coding of a, of a different, of each uh, writing okay. system. So, Afnarar, kunu porikol ponasani, the in future, iktari international recognition law lagi? Or international recognition, uh, Unicode Committee recognition, or uh, yes, two thousand and three. Yeah, but like two thousand and into pura pura support or ina. Kali Libre Office, Open Office support or ar nana into Android, what's the the WhatsApp, uh, Microsoft Word. And your wife Sue is pura, developing pura, something, uh, isn't she? She is uh, liaising with this uh, committee. Select English mm. dictionary. Oh, she's making a she's making a dictionary. She's uh, it's got very very big. It's a okay. very com uh, she's been working for twenty five years. Twenty five so years. There's lots of entries on computer. Yes. Oh, amazing. And we have a putty dictionary, and we have a putty dictionary, and a putty language dictionary, and a modern dictionary. Okay. Have you right. started writing comprehensive grammar I and have, select yes. language? Yes, I have. I. I started when I did some work at SOAS, School, School of Oriental Here, Studies, in, in, in London, in London uh, 2003 4. But I rather neglected it and I spent the summer um, writing, um, uh, dedicated to working on this grammar. I didn't finish it, but uh, languages are very big things. Kotodin Lagbo? Kotodin, inshallah, duitin, aro duitin Lagbo. Okay. So, are you getting support from the British Bangladeshi community? Uh, yes, a lot of informal support. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Tell us very briefly it's the, published. Um, your intention about the holy structure scriptures. Yes, scriptures uh, translation in Sileti. Well, we've the first first publication uh, in collaboration with Abdul Hamid in Birmingham. It's a, uh, part of the Quran Sharif in yes. Sileti. This is That's this was done. It a thirty trish para. Trish number para. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, this is a there more are a lot experimental. Of books. And a lot this of is books about this is the um, this is the New Testament in the, the Nagri script. Okay. And that's um, uh, that was published in two thousand and fourteen. Right. And uh, we are. We have completed the draft of the Torat, uh -huh. um, Torat Sharif, yes. and uh, Zabur Sharif is starting. A Torat Sharif will be printed. Uh, it needs careful revision and uh, will be printed uh, maybe in yeah. uh, after one year. Yeah, there are I think about eight books. Most well, of it we is have we, yes, yeah. I brought eight books, and they are Puti, from Puti, our. Puti. This is Putipora uh, yeah. PhD by my colleague. It's been a very interesting conversation with you. And um, we are very delighted that you came to Channel S. I want to thank you very much for coming to Channel S and being uh, involved with the community, being involved with SILET and the language to retain it and to uh, make it more interesting with your publications and so on. Uh, I'm sure the community will be always supporting you. And when you are in SILET, have a good time in Select. Thank you. And th thank you so much for inviting me. It's been a very, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Viewers, unfortunately, we have to conclude our discussion today. As usual, we bring very interesting uh, people with their very interesting subjects. Soon, we'll be back with another interesting person. Stay tuned with Channelers. Thank you. <laughs>